a very good morning to you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, um, I want to be a, a little bit uh, controversial with what I'm usually, uh, uh, what I usually am. Uh, uh, for me, it is no wonder uh, to have heard uh, what you have heard, uh, uh, which is uh, very much in the direction of uh, uh, criticizing Russia for what is happening and what has happened and what might happen uh, uh, in the future uh, in, a, in a very negative fashion, or let's say risky fashion, but it is. I think we have reached definitely one of the most risky uh, point in time after the fall of the Berlin Wall now. Uh, I can't remember of any other situation where we have uh, uh, seen uh, more or less, and I wouldn't like to call it this way, a, a start of the Cold War again. And I, I, don't, <laughs> I say it, but I don't want to say it at the same time. So in other words, what I see and feature, because we are talking about 10 years after accession of uh, a great part of uh, the former Central and Eastern European countries to the EU, is a change in the total uh, transformation perspective that is happening. It was introduced, it has been introduced by Lehman, crisis, Europe, states, world, still prevailing. Uh, we are still suffering, uh, trying to rearrange the EU primarily. What we are talking, ladies and gentlemen, is very much a weakness of the EU, very much. It is very much a reason and the consequence that the states believe they are the masters of the world, and they are not. They are the strongest, uh, the strongest economic power, by far the strongest military power. But try to make a radar uh, in front of your invisible eyes and start with Africa, what goes wrong in this world, and how many spots of fire we do have. <laughs> Africa, boo. Middle East, Afghanistan, I left out Iran, because we need to change Iran now, otherwise we cannot get peace to Syria, and what have you. <laughs> Thousand places, I'm exaggerating, deliberately so. Too many fires burning. You cannot manage all that. Impossible. You cannot. So a non-prepared EU and a state that is not capable to run the many fires, to extinguish the many fires that we have. Now let me go back a, a few years in history with regards to the EU-Ukrainian relation, uh, relations. Uh, I deliberately do not mention the name of the commissioner. I have been traveling several times personally to Brussels to talk to the then responsible commissioner, asking the commissioner, why don't you uh, visit Ukraine uh, why don't you show some sort of uh, taking note of this huge country? Uh, just to be precautionary, I told uh, also the lady that uh, you don't have to bring tons of money because I know EU do, does not dispose of tons of money, uh, but just show that you are interested in this country. Go there, talk uh, to the uh, politicians, try to bind them into politics, uh, European politics for the future. Nothing happened. Nothing. Over years, nothing happened. Suddenly, when the polls were coming up, the neighboring countries, uh -huh, there is a country called Ukraine. We could do something with this country in Ukraine. 
And then uh, the EU started suddenly an accession process that they that was known to them, I would say the normal routine of accession process started, and they forgot, first of all, why they do it, and I'm coming back to that statement, it's a strong statement, why they do it. Second, they did it exactly the way as they have started to do it uh, when they started with uh, uh, Czech Republic, Slovakia, uh, down to or up to uh, 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 Croatia. They started an accession process as if the country would like to have the accession. But this government, this government did not like to have the accession. And still the process was done as it used to be before. I think a huge mistake, a huge second mistake. Before you start an accession process, and now I use the word from the West, then you have to make up your mind what do you finally want to achieve and can you achieve it? Do we really want to have Ukraine being an active part of the EU when it is so unlikely that it can happen? I'm coming back to the question that has been put uh, by the moderator of uh, this table, can reforms happen in a country without becoming a member of uh, the EU? That is a major issue. I say yes, of course, and there is no other way with Ukraine. Ukraine cannot in a foreseeable future become a member of the EU. It's an illusion. And to drive this process within three years, two and a half years, and then opposing uh, this uh, uh, Yanukovych uh, to sign that, and of course, of course, put in play this card and say, knowing that the EU will come up with illusionary conditions, uh, uh, 600 million, knowing that they, ne that they need eight uh, not millions, billions, I always say. 600 millions, I'm right, although they needed 18 billions. That was the, the economic concession. And it took the EU up to now to make up their mind what they will finally give, because it's a lengthy process in a country, in a union of countries of 28 uh, members. It's a lengthy process. And we know from experience that none of the countries wants to give. None. So I really wonder where they will take these, allegedly now uh, uh, being said, four, four billion, the first four billion uh, uh, that are in the pipeline, or six billion, final. So they are still waiting very much for the US, and then Biden comes with 80 million, said a little bit of Biden. This is illusion. So it has to be a package, or has to become a package, where the EU takes a major part beside the IMF, of course, uh, leading the process. I believe if you take the geopolitical situation of Ukraine, with the strong relationship on both sides, to both sides, historical. I mean, Ukraine, is, Ukraine, Ukraine was the, the initiative of Russia. I mean, this is where it all developed from, finally, from Kiev. We, uh, the, the, the Russian society and the development finally started. Just a, a, a short fall back to history. Uh, I think geopolitical, the country needs both relationships, very strongly so. This was the case in the past, it will be the case in the future. And I strongly believe that a change of equation within the country that means structural reforms are possible, they have to be possible without becoming a member, a formality, a member of the EU. To become a member of the EU under present circumstances is a far-reached goal, yes, leave it in the air, but the work on reaching the short-term goals in order to avoid, to avoid a war 
And this is where we are now. It is a little fire that can start that. And I've seen yesterday in, on Austrian TV the start of the second, of the first world war. Uh, uh, and if the story was not true, uh, exactly, it is very true what, uh, uh, what uh, the idea was concerned because there were too many people wanting to see that war that cost 17 uh, million people's lives. So, to believe that you can get a new member of 48 million, historically, economically, for defense reasons so important into the EU and possibly NATO, and possibly NATO, don't forget that, Russia cannot say yes to. It is totally impossible. And I'm really asking myself about the quality of European uh, politicians. When Putin started his reign after Gorbachev, after Yeltsin, Gorbachev has more or less defeated, that is the, the, the opinion of the, of the Russian citizens, uh, uh, the empire, the, the Soviet Union, what have you, therefore they don't like him. Uh, and then Yeltsin came and Yeltsin started the biggest self-service uh, 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 economy in the world. Everybody could take what he, uh, uh, what he could uh, uh, run for, uh, uh, and, and that was it. And then came Putin and said, again, law and order. And let's, I want, I want to see Russia again as a strong and dominant country. This was a, one of his very first statements that he said. When he, when he became, I mean, when he was elected, everybody knows that. He also made the arrangement with the oligarchs and said, look, guys, don't spit in my political pot. Then I will let you work. I make politics and you make business, unlike Yanukovych. Yanukovych was not a Russian ally. Yanukovych worked for the family. He worked for his own pocket. Don't forget that. And if you have seen Putin and Yanukovych at the same place talking to each other, I mean, there was so much animosity I have I've not seen in my life before. They couldn't smell each other. So, my credo is without uh, to make policy in the front yard of Russia, without including Russia, in a way that is disastrous from the political design as well as from the way as how it has been done and still it is being handled, has to be end or has to end in a disaster. There is no other possibility that it is much more difficult now than it would have been at the beginning of the process. There is no question. There, there is no question about that. But still, I believe, that without giving Russia the certainty that Ukraine will not become a member of the EU, without Russia giving the certainty that definitely Ukraine will not become a NATO member, this conflict will accelerate, will continue. And I still say, after Kuchma uh, making the country losing 10 years of development. Then came the orange guys. They didn't even talk with each, uh, with each other. Five other lost years, Yushchenko and Timoshenko, right? Five lost other years. They were corrupt as the others before. Now came a man of law and order with the Ukrainians wished back and elected him. He worked for him, for the oligarchs. He used the oligarchs to work for his own pocket. And that, that is, as is reality. Now, the first time, according to my own feeling, I see, uh, uh, I've finished that. Uh, the first time I have the feeling that now we get a government, although it's an interim government, but really, who really want to work for the country, not for their own pockets. This is the first time that I get this impression. Sorry that I was usually too long. Excuse me. <laughs>